evening and welcome to the National Conference for Community and Justice, or as many of you know, NCCJ's 43rd Annual Friendship uh, Fundraiser. Uh, I'm Dayton City Commissioner Jeffrey Mims, and it's my distinct honor and pleasure to be here with you this evening. You know, in uh, normal times, you know, we would be uh, probably all sitting together having dinner, drinks, uh, of course, not adult beverages, but uh, enjoying ourselves and enjoying each other's company. Because of the uh, virus, we find ourselves in a different situation, and uh, certainly we all try to make the best of that as we go through these challenging times. Tonight, we have the opportunity, though, to celebrate local individuals while raising funds for an organization that is actively making a difference in the Miami Valley. I would like to take this moment to thank the NCCJ Board, of, you know, the Board of Directors, for their endless pursuit and equity in the community. To view the most updated roster of the board and those individuals who are, again, helping to make this event possible, please visit the link below at the bottom of your screen. I also want to take the time to thank the event planning team and the NCCJ board staff for uh, helping to put all of this together. And lastly, I would like to acknowledge the previous humanitarian award recipients and help you find that list also at the bottom of your screen. And those individuals have been recognized over the last 43 years. Tonight, we're going to hear from members of the NCCJ staff, board of directors, and from alumni of the various programs. And before we begin, I would like to take this opportunity to recognize the generous sponsors for making this event possible and showing their commitment and support in helping the NCJ Board and the uh, Board of Greater Dayton take action to end discrimination and bias in our community. NCCJ's work would not be possible without your generous contributions. Thank you to tonight's sponsors. Our presenting sponsor and social justice champion, Premier Health. Our leadership champion and video sponsor, Indigo Life. Our equity champion sponsors, CareSource and Sinclair College. Our diversity champion sponsors, Anonymous, the Dayton Foundation, Economy Linen and Towel Service, Fifth Third Bank, Greater Dayton Regional Transit Authority, Hauser Asphalt and Concrete, JP Morgan Chase, Messer Construction Company, Montgomery County Commissioners, Montgomery County Department of Human Services, Planning and Development, Montgomery County Sheriff's Department, and Skanska USA. Our inclusion champions, Bob Ross Auto Group, City of Dayton Police Department, Clark Schaefer Hackett, CPAs and Advisors, Dayton Children's Hospital, Five Rivers Metro Parks, the Jewish Federation of Greater Dayton, Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission, Montgomery County Adams Board, Nalls Law Group, LLC, Nirmala R. Abraham, MD, and Thompson Hine, LLP. Thank you again to all of tonight's sponsors. Thank you again to all of the event sponsors. Your dedication to diversity, equity, and inclusion is seen and appreciated. Now, I would like to introduce the chair of NCCJ's board, Mr. Ian Simpson. My name is Ian Simpson, and I have the privilege of being the chairman of the board of the National Conference for Community and Justice. I want to thank everyone so much for being here today and their continued support for NCCJ. With the increases in incidents of racial, ethnic, and religious intolerance, the need for an organization with the capacity to create a community dedicated to eliminating bias, bigotry, and all forms of discrimination is needed now more than ever. NCCJ is that organization. This year has been a transition year for NCCJ with new leadership, new programs, and new staff. We are so excited to be experiencing a year of growth and renewed energy. Just a little bit about myself, um, I've worked in the construction industry for the past 30 years and I joined the board of NCCJ about seven years ago and have transitioned from board member to treasurer and recently been named board chair this past January. Prior to joining the board, I was on the Minority Business Partnership Committee 
that worked with small minority veteran and women-owned businesses to grow their companies. Seven years ago, I attended the Friendship Dinner and I learned of the different programs and how it was impacting our community. I thought this would be a great way to work toward improving our community beyond working with companies to become more inclusive with their contracting. So I decided to join the board and I've been part of the agency ever since. In order to support and expand our staff, operations, and programs, we need to raise $100,000 this year at a virtual Friendship Live event. In the midst of the COVID pandemic, and the increased need for programs and advocacy for racial equality, NCCJ has stepped up and created new programming to help our community together. NCCJ has always worked to challenge stereotypes, celebrate differences, and create justice. Your financial support will allow us to continue to offer these vital programs and to expand our outreach programs to additional groups in our community. The time to be bold is now. We thank you for your support in enabling us to achieve our mission. To make a contribution to NCCJ, visit our website at nccjgreaterdayton.org backslash donate. Once again, we'd like to thank you for coming today. And now I would like to introduce our executive director, Adrian Miller, who's leading all of the changes at NCCJ, including the expansion and development of our new programs. Adrian. Hello and welcome to the 43rd year of NCCJ honoring humanitarians in our community and our first year being virtual. So welcome to the Friendship Live event. I am Adrienne Miller, Executive Director of the National Conference for Community and Justice of Greater Dayton. Thank you for being here tonight and thank you to our honorees. Tonight we have the honor of recognizing several great humanitarians in our community, including Amaha Selassie, Community Healer, Brent Johnson and Josh Stuckey and the Ruby Girls, Helen Jones Kelly with Adamus, Michelle Riley and the staff at the Dayton Food Bank, Mayor Nan Whaley in the City of Dayton, Tom Maltzby with United Way, and Mike Parks and the Dayton Foundation. These honorees have gone above and beyond in the past year and a half. They have helped address issues of mental health, of food inequities. They have helped make us laugh. They have brought us together to heal, to communicate, and even at times to celebrate. They get together and they figure out what we need. They advocate within our communities and beyond to help make sure that we are all working together to heal and be the strong community that we are. Thank you all for being here with us this evening. Thank you for helping us support these amazing individuals in our community, our humanitarians who are out there doing all this hard work. Thank you for supporting NCCJ because without you, we would not be able to continue our mission of building a community dedicated to eliminating bias, bigotry, and all forms of discrimination. A mission that is important now even more so than it has ever been. And it helps remind me of our theme for this evening. Many hands, one heart, Dayton United. Thank you again for all being here. Uh, my name is Mikkel Pullen, and I was a camp counselor at Police and Youth Together, and I was a delegate at Camp Anytime. As a counselor, I sat with my table of children and made sure that they were paying attention to what we were doing, and I would also also hand out lunch to them and I would just make sure that they were having a good time while they were there. There was one activity where the some people from the SWAT came and we got to do an obstacle course going from their Bearcat to the giant car and that was really fun. Police and Youth Together was important to me because I got the chance to be in a leadership role. Uh, it also let me build bonds with the children and with the police officers that were there. As a delegate of Camp Anytown, some of the activities we did were we all uh, lined up in a line and we held pool noodles side to side, so we were all about this far away from each other. And the prompter would read off specific details about someone's life, and if that detail applied to you, you would take a step forward 
or if you were prompted, you would take a step back. So it would be like, if your parents are divorced, take a step back, stuff like that. And at the end, you got to see how far you could get in front of other people, and you could really see that it doesn't really matter what race or age or gender you are, that we all have things that bring us back, but we also have things that push us forward. The thing that stands out the most from Camp Anytown is the family groups that were put in together. Because even though we were only there for four days, we were there for about 10 hours each day. And we would be in a group with f three other delegates, including myself, and two or three other counselors. And over the course of those four days, we would really get to know one another and really start caring for the other people in our family group and truly become a family with each other. To donate to NCCJ, you can text the words Dayton United as one word to 44321. Again, that's D-A-Y-T-O-N-U-N-I-T-E-D to 44321. It should be on your screen now. You can also donate by visiting nccjgreaterdayton.org slash donate or by mailing a check to NCCJ at 131 North Ludlow Street, Suite 27, Dayton, Ohio 45402. And thank you, Ian, Adrian, and Mikhail. Tonight is our annual fundraiser where we celebrate and honor eight local individuals who have stepped up through these unprecedented set of hardships that the Miami Valley has experienced and faced over the last year and a half. Tonight's humanitarian award recipients have stepped up through hate groups and that rally that we had in 2019 through the Memorial Day tornadoes, through the unfortunate shooting and the loss of life in the Oregon District, and now through this pandemic. These individuals have served this community with bravery, dedication, and love. But first, a huge thank you to Indigo Life, who has produced tonight's uh, Humanitarian Award documentary and the NCCJ Impact videos. NCCJ has been honoring humanitarians from around the Miami Valley for the past 43 years. We do this because it's important to acknowledge the hard work and commitment that people are doing within our communities. This year, we decided to pick people that have shined during the tragedies that our community has faced over the past year and a half. During the violence, natural disaster, hate, and disease that our community has gone through, these individuals have stood out they have been present for everything and get up every day and figure out what else they can do to help our community to heal and to come together. Well, we've obviously been through some very turbulent times in the last 15 months. Tornadoes, shooting, uh, COVID, and, and now racial justice. I mean, these are very daunting issues. Some of these issues, obviously, we had no control over. They just happen to us. You know, we were as prepared as we possibly could be for emergencies, but these things happen and you don't know when they're gonna happen. So when you can't plan for something, you know, then you have to be able to manage it. I was really impressed with the collaboration where people just kind of focused on the issues at hand and did everything that they could to make sure that we as a community was strong to be able to respond to these in ways that really helped a lot of people out and especially those that were impacted. I think we were, we were all tested. There were periods of maybe despair and doubt. I'm one of those people that like, like when it gets real, I get realer, you know? So it's like, I, I just like, I naturally kind of just, just see like how to jump in and, and, and help. What people say when they visit Dayton is that we're lucky enough to live in a community of people that give and are so friendly. And I think that through all of these tragedies, I think Dayton has had a chance to even step up in an even greater way and deliver to the community 
more of its core values. And I think that's actually been really refreshing and positive and hopeful. In crisis, people step into their true selves. There are no boundaries in the helping profession when you're in crisis. You do what you have to do to help get the work done. But you have to think about trauma. You have to think about employment and all of the stress and experiences people are having just because they don't have their usual routines. We're about workforce development. We're about anything we need to be in order to help us get to the other side of the tragedies that are occurring. We join forces with organizations that are designed to do the same thing that we would be doing. And by combining our efforts, we tend to think that we can leverage more support and more dollars. And most importantly, not confuse the community about, you know, where they should give. You know, we, we have one pot, you know, one fund that you can give to. The Dayton Foundation did. Mike Parks called us and said, let's do it together. And we had no hesitation. We raised uh, almost uh, $2 million to address them collaboratively and collectively. And I think that worked out well. We're fortunate to partner with the United Way on the COVID relief fund, along with many, many generous, generous folks. FEMA's guesstimating that we have about six to 10 years of work yet ahead of us in terms of tornado relief. So we've come a long way. We've got a very collaborative community that comes together to help their neighbors, but we've got a lot more to do. We've contributed on many levels. I think, you know, after the tornadoes, there was a small group of us that went to help clean up the area where it took place. We've donated to multiple uh, area charities to make sure people are getting food, clothing, anything that they might need that we might not be aware that they need. We've also done like virtual programming to raise money for area service providers. So we've done what we can and there's always more to be done. A lot of times, which the Ruby Girls know this about themselves, a lot of times we're not aware of what we're not aware of. So we have to be made aware to be able to help. The work that we do every day is dealing with people who are in crisis. The biggest surprises were our growth. And what I mean by that is being challenged in ways that we've never been challenged as a team before. We saw immediate need go up 69%. We saw people who never thought that they would ask for help, who've never been in the system before, have to get in our food line. So you have folks in our team who are dealing with the same questions, issues, fears, anxiety as the people who we are now serving in the line. So us learning how to, as a team, how to be in service to, while you know, still taking good care of ourselves. When one tragedy hits the second by the third tragedy, I was worried about our staff. That's a lot to throw on anybody. And Chris Smith on our staff said it best. She says, this is our community. And it's part of the healing process for the community, but it's also part of the healing process for our staff. All of us learning to stay in our lane <laughs> and that we don't have to be every part of the wheel to make the wheel roll. We can do our part and everyone else does their part. Mm -hmm. As long as we're all heading the same direction, it works. So, you know, there have been some bumps along the way and there probably was a bump Tuesday. You know, it's, it's real, it's, it's ever changing and growing. It's hard to process at first, you know, there's always a, an element of fear. But what I've learned in my life um, is that uh, there's one thing that can help you overcome fear very fast and that's faith. You know, even though sometimes you have to pivot, you have to do things differently. But if we take a look at what our strengths are and what our resources are and what our supports are and how we address this, then we just become strategic in terms of how we map that out and, and how we respond. You know, nobody's prepared for something like this. Well, I mean, certainly when they knock on your door at four in the morning, you have to get up and get to work, which is how um, uh, how I found out about the shooting. And so when those things happen, you want to like go right away. I, luckily, um, the staff person, the city attorney that, that told me about it, and my husband were like, hey, you probably should take a shower and get ready for work. Same is true with the tornadoes. I mean, I, I didn't realize the extent of the damage until around four or five in the morning when the city manager called me. And again, you know, you start the day. The job of mayor is to try to um, lead the community through tough change, but during crises, it's it's to communicate as much as you know, as fully as you know. I certainly can't do this work without the people that care for me. They've all gone through these these experiences too. Like they're community members. They you know got called in the middle of the night on August fourth. They had to figure out how to 
you know, work uh, through uh, cleaning up tornado damage, you know, uh, they're dealing with the process of COVID. You know, in Ethiopia, we got a saying, cost by cost, slowly, slowly, the A begins to walk. You know what I mean? The deeper the relationship is, there's enough trust that you can adapt and shoot the gaps in the moment, right? And like, and I think that those are like when you have the big breakthroughs, like when something happens and like doesn't take a month of meetings to decide to move, like you trust the people enough that they just move and they act and they shoot the gap and they occupy the space, you know what I mean? Because really right now, as we're growing in love, as we're growing in understanding our, our interdependence, that, that we need each other, you know what I mean? This notion of Ubuntu, that I exist because you exist, you exist because I exist, and I can't be all that I can be until you are all that you can be, and you can't be all that you can be until I am all that I can be, right? This notion that we're in this together. The funny story is when I came here, I didn't want to be a CEO. I felt like a lot of CEOs get in the way of the real work. And the reason that I've been successful in order, in, in meaning my life is no longer impoverished, is because really strong women wrap their arms around me. And these are women for absolutely no reason. They didn't know me, they had no tie to me, but they themselves were leaders. And I don't mean by title or perceived power, they were leaders because they saw something in me that I didn't see in myself and they wrapped their arms around me and they refused to let me fail. There was a woman, Elizabeth Middleton Jones. My grandmother was one of those people who just was all about service. And to be quite honest, I, had, I didn't even realize until after my grandmother died that she had not graduated from traditional high school. If we think that we've got racism issues now, we had some really significant ones then as well. But the thing that she always was, as I watched her, was very articulate, um, always paying attention to other people, listening. That is where I got my sense of giving back. To this day, I'm still trying to make my grandmother proud of me. There are people here at City Hall and at home that there, I, there's just no way I would have gotten through this without their amazing work. It takes a lot of people helping me out and believing in the work that we're doing together to get it done. I'll say too that uh, one of the things I, I looked up and realized that most of them are women. I'm really proud of that, that see these women and other leadership roles across the city organization, from like the law director to the city manager. We've all had to lead in different ways. And one of the things I think during COVID, I've tried to remind everybody is we gotta give each other some grace. This is a, ta this is a team that works very high energy at a very high level. And you can only do that through so many crises. And so, uh, you know, really trying to give each other the uh, permission to take some space, especially in this in this marathon, not sprint, that is the pandemic we're in. My mother was quite a community organizer in Washington, D.C. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'll just give you one example. I could give you many. But there was a freeway called the North Central Freeway, which you know today is Beltway 495. It's the biggest beltway that surrounds D.C. And it was supposed to come through our neighborhood. My mother led the Lamont Riggs uh, Civic Association and gathered hundreds of people in the neighborhood, long story short, fought that development and they rerouted it in another way because a lot of people would have lost their homes. So, you know, I learned a lot about advocacy. I learned a lot about taking a stance and I was inspired by that and I paid that forward. I would probably say my most defining moment was when I'm working at my aunt's gas station. I'm reading a book by Martin Luther King called A Stride Towards Freedom. And he said, agape love is community. And I had to pause because I was in the community talking about agape love. And then I started understanding that, you know, from a Christian perspective, you know, Christ was many members in one body. And so that's community. So then I started realizing that this whole time when I've been in the community talking about agape love, I was actually talking about community. And that was just like a light that just went off in my head. I was like, okay, I need everything I can find on community, every book, every lecture, you know, everything. I even switched my major, you know, like everything I could do to find out more about community, I did, you know what I mean? So I would say that's probably uh, uh, my, my biggest turning point. I mean, obviously the HIV crisis is really what catapulted the Ruby Girls to have a mission. That's really where it kind of got its legs, so to speak. When you're giving of yourself and you're looking for that way to get back to the community, be patient with yourself, be willing to try different things, but be consistent and know that it's not gonna happen and you're not gonna have the level of success in one night, one month, one year. 
You're talking about someone who's been doing this for over 30 years, but consistently doing it for 30 years. Time, willingness, vulnerability, mm -hmm. all of that makes a difference. True. The Ruby Girls helped build my self-confidence. And it was through the camaraderie and through the friendships and through the comfort level that I started to gain on stage that I started to realize that my voice could be independent as well. I told my daughter since she was young that I don't know if I'll be here to inhabit the land, but I want to be part of the process to get us to that land, to that promise, you know? And then the next generation is going to occupy that promise and, and make that the, the new reality, truly just honoring the dignity and worth of, of, of every human being. You know, I think being human is an experience or humanitarian is an experience that I think if we all share and we took seriously and, and we rooted that humanitarianism in love, I think our society would be able to do many more things a lot better than through the conflict that we try to, to work ourselves through. Leaders need to understand that as they climb the leadership ladder, they need to remember the people that they're meeting along the way because at some point, in order to be a true leader, you've got to fail because that's where the real learning occurs. And as you're coming back down to the ground, you're going to be counting on those people that you were operating with as you were ascending the ladder. Leadership requires a full team. Otherwise, who are you leading? Uh, NCCJ and their body of work is something that is something that we point to all the time here when we're talking about good work around social justice, around really digging into these you know community conversations and work around race relations. So it's a great organization, number one. But to get the humanitarian award is a great honor. I don't know if I necessarily deserve something as uh, auspicious as that, as that word and that award, but I'm truly, truly grateful that um, so, uh, an organization that I think so highly of uh, thought of me. It's, it's a real great honor. When Adrian called, I was very thankful, but I said uh, to Adrian, why, why me? This is what the foundation is here to do in our community. We're here to help others, and uh, we're fortunate to be in a position to do that and honored to be part of the Dayton community, join NCCJ and others that are working on issues of equity and racism in our community to make it a better place for all. I love the organization, but even more than that, I love that they're here paying attention to what is happening in terms of social justice and that they are making a difference for people. This is just such a wonderful honor. Not my honor, but for the people who are part of my club, so to speak, right? My team, my advisors, um, the ones who lift me up. It means that somewhere along the way, if I am truly in the leadership role, and sometimes being in the leadership role means I'm in the middle of the group, it means that we're making a difference and somebody noticed and we're very, very grateful for that. To be honest, I'm a little different when it comes to awards because like I, I was raised not to touch the anointing, just allow it to flow, you know? And so like I, I, you know, like, you know, I give all glory to God and I just, you know, put my head down the next day and keep doing the work, you know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't like, none of this happens by one person or even like one organization or one group, right? It's, it's all, everybody coming together and, and that's just real. It's surprising because <laughs> we don't, you don't step up to the plate for this, you do it for all those other reasons, but to be recognized is meaningful and it's important and uh, it's very appreciated. And it gives us an opportunity to reach out to potentially even more people to support our mission and what we do. So we're very grateful for that. And hopefully it can be used as a catalyst for other individuals who feel like, oh, maybe, maybe I can give too. Step outside your comfort zone. And you know, there is a way for all of us, the Ruby Girls included, who still will evolve. You have the ability to evolve and change into something so beautiful. And so I hope you'll take the risk and take the opportunity to do that for yourself. You will be amazed what it does for your soul to give. This year's humanitarians embody the work that NCCJ does. You too can carry on the work that our humanitarians are doing by getting involved in your community, by volunteering, by educating yourself, and by connecting with others and having courageous conversations. Wow, what a tremendous documentary. 
it really helped to capture a lot of what we've gone through over the last year and a half. You know, and now the moment that we've all been waiting for, and that is to recognize those individuals. And our first recipient is Mr. Amaha Selassie of the Gym City Market. And you know, Amaha has uh, worn many hats in terms of this community, and he's always available to do whatever he can to help, again, members uh, from the Dayton area. Hi, greetings. I am so honored to receive this award from NCCJ tonight. Uh, I was humbled and taken back uh, to, to be thought of. Um, I think it's, it's always apparent that when you get awards like this, there's a multi multitude of people who have helped uh, in this. And uh, I thought about saying names. I was like, I'm going to forget somebody. So, <laughs> so I'm like, uh, I want to thank, you know, first my wife and my daughter and my family. Um, but I, I want to thank, you know, Sinclair, I want to thank West Dayton Strong, I want to thank Gym City Market, uh, I want to thank everybody in the community and the multitude of mentors uh, who have helped me, the HRC, everybody who's helped me, uh, helped me to grow along the way and helped me to truly understand how to live out my values because, you know, it's one thing to have a heart for the people, it's next thing to know how to, how to put that into action and how to walk in love and build the trust to, to build that shared future from a divided past. And I'm just so thankful for all the great work that's happening in Dayton and I look forward to the future and I just encourage everybody to know that we truly are the ones that we've been waiting for and I hope we continue to build the deeper relationships amongst each other that we can uh, truly just walk in a vision, a vision of the community that we want to work, live, and play in, and how we leverage our resources to making it happen, knowing that we're not independent by people or by organizations, that we're truly in this together. It's going to take all of us uh, working together, acknowledging our dignity and worth, and harnessing our resources to, to make the bright future that we want to see for our community and for our future generations. And I want to encourage everybody to realize the, the power we have as individuals. Oftentimes we, we look to others to, to find the solutions, but we really have the answers inside of ourselves and we have the power to, to make it happen. And that's why I'm so thankful and honored to be part of the Gym City Market because when we saw a problem in, in the community, uh, we came together, we had no idea of, of what, the, what a grocery store really was uh, other than like how to shop and eat. But, uh, you know, we, we walked with the community and we leveraged our resources to, to make it happen. And to me, like, that's, it's an example of collective hope, right? That, like, we band together as a community. We're 2,700 uh, members now. Uh, we came together. You know, the store's about to open. And it's just the beginning, right, of, like, like, like how to transform our community, uh, how to make sure that we're, we're meeting the needs of the most marginalized, uh, and that their voice is included in the center of, of all policy decisions and, and that we can truly make sure we, we, we you know, the more, the more that we take care of those that, that our voices are not heard, the more everybody's going to be taken care of, right? So, like, I'm thankful for uh, how the market can serve in this role to provide fresh fruits and vegetables in an area that, that has been disinvested for, I don't even know how long, you know? So I'm just thankful for uh, everybody's trust and confidence and patience and I look forward to seeing you in hopefully January when we open up. So thank you. <laughs> you know, thank you, Amaha. And now Brett Johnson and Josh Stuckey of the Ruby Girls. You know, they do a lot of work in terms of raising funds to help uh, the youth in our community. Very much important, very much needed. We just want to take a minute to say thank you so very much to those people that thought of us for this award, um, and most especially to the National Conference for Community and Justice of Greater Dayton. We as the Ruby Girls are very excited to be here. Yes, thank you very much. So this is Brent Johnson, I'm Josh Stuckey. Um, just a few people we need to thank for sure. The sponsors of the Ruby Girls over the last, gosh, 25, 30 years, believe it or not. Also, we want to thank our friends and family and the other 10 Ruby Girls who are hard at work today while we get the joy of coming and making this video. We are so honored by this though. Brent? To all of our fans and all of the Ruby Girls that came and are now in retirement, uh, we thank you very much. Yes, so it's really great. And uh, you know, to know that we're thought of as humanitarians is huge. Um, 
probably more than for any other reason, just the fact that we've seen a lot in the last 35 years, and to know that we were kind of ahead of the game on many of those things um, really makes us feel good, be that HIV, be that um, you know helping out with the homeless, hospice, so on and so forth. It's really an amazing thing for us. We're so lucky to live in a community like Dayton where it's surrounded with great people, great energy, uh, a great history of creatives that uh, set the stage for all that we're able to do as Ruby Girls and as community members. And I think, you know, in Dayton, Ohio, just the idea of the open-mindedness that goes on in our city, that we are a city that is, you know, very much together through everything that our city has been faced with. And one of those things is the fact that the Ruby Girls, who are just a bunch of guys getting dressed up like women to raise some money and help people, has been so accepted, shows the heart of this incredible community. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now, Ms. Helen Jones Kelly from the Montgomery County Adams Board. A, they do a tremendous amount of work in this community, and I sit on some of those boards myself in terms of working with them and trying to provide services throughout this community for those who are very much in need. So I think of myself as a person who is rather average in stature. However, I am standing really, really tall today and it feels so awesome. But I'm also aware that this sense of tallness is, is not attributable to me. It is attributable to so many others who have impacted my life in so many ways, actually starting from birth, and helping me to find and remain on purpose. I am so grateful. I'm so grateful to NCCJ because this is one of those honors that just makes you feel so special in community. You know, you don't do the work to get accolades. You do it because it's the right thing to do. If you're on purpose, you just do what you're supposed to be doing. But I so appreciate NCG, NCCJ, the director, the staff, its board, those people who I hold in such high regard for the work that they do in the community. I'm also proud to be in this particular group of honorees because everybody in this group is someone that I also hold in high regard. I've watched them from afar, and I think that's the, that's the point, right? When you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you find out that people are watching, they're paying attention, and it means that you're doing something right. I cannot forget in any way, shape, or form my family and my, my teams, and I have so many teams. I have a team of staff who are outstanding and who have worked relentlessly through the pandemic to keep services flowing to those people who need them, the people who depend upon us day by day. I've been fortunate, I've had bosses, I've had so many people who've mentored me, who've embraced me, and who've put me in places where I was allowed to live out my purpose in life. Most of all, I just think in terms of how we come together as community. We're doing this during a time when we are battling one of our most difficult challenges, but we've had challenges for the last couple of years. And we know how to rise above them, and we rise above them by being our authentic selves and by coming together, working together as team. That's why it means so much to be part of this group of honorees. We've worked together as team. We, as a community, stand out because we know how to be civil, we know how to come together in love and compassion, and we know how to get it done. Thank you so much, because I'm, I'm really honored, I'm really honored to receive this recognition on behalf of everyone whose shoulders that I get to stand on, so thank you. Yo, thank you, Helen, I really appreciate your work. And now, next, Michelle Riley and the staff of the Dayton Food Bank. And uh, during these challenging times uh, with job losses uh, throughout this community, uh, again, another very, very vital service in the Dayton area. Good afternoon, everyone. I have the distinct honor of representing myself and the food bank team uh, to tell NCCJ thank you for this award. 
I'd like to take just a moment to tell you why this one is so important to us. It's not just important that we feed the people that are in our lines, it's also important that we shorten our line. And we do that by being heavily involved in reentry work. So for our team, this particular award means the world to us. It means that we are being recognized for this exact work that we do in justice. And we couldn't do this important work without people like you. People like you in the audience that are supporting NCCJ and their mission. Leadership comes with a lot of different titles. For us at the Food Bank team, it isn't about the title that you hold, it's about the work that you do. Many of the people that I share my work with that I do every day, they have their own stories of hunger so that they then in turn have given back to the community in the way that they have makes, makes this award really belong to them. The work that they do every day is a lot of times unthanked because when people come to our lines, they're angry, they're scared, they're hungry. We had the tornadoes and then COVID and people were caught unawares. They never thought they would find themselves in our line. And for my team, our team, to address the need and to serve others with the compassion and the grace that they do makes me proud of them every single day. And we'd just like to say thank you again. Yeah, thank you, Michelle, and the staff from the Dayton Food Bank. And now another individual. I work with him a lot on some of the boards that we have in the Dayton area as well. Mr. Michael Parks from the Dayton Foundation. Thank you to NCCJ for this kind recognition. Most importantly, thank you for all the good work that you do day in and day out in our community. We need NCCJ now more than ever, and I encourage each of us to consider a gift to NCCJ for their work in our community. I'm also honored and humbled to join this committed and dedicated group of individuals being recognized here this evening. Earlier this year, Foundation was proud to join the dedicated staff of our local United Way in establishing the COVID-19 Relief Fund. And that work continues. This past year has been a difficult one for Daytonians. First, there was the tornadoes, then the shootings in the Oregon District, then COVID-19, and the persistent problem of racial inequality. But what's amazing is time and time and time again, Daytonians stepped forward to help their neighbors. I was particularly thankful for the Oregon District Oversight Committee, so artfully led by Brother Ray Fitz and Dr. Gary Leroy. I'm thankful for the 16 organizations that banded together and came together to work on the individual relief and tornado recovery. They were supported by thousands of people coming forward to help their neighbors. And I'm thankful for the Community Advisory Board that's helping us make good decisions on how to best help our neighbors during this time of COVID. The generosity that's been shown by Daytonians has been just nothing short of amazing. There's thousands and thousands of gifts have gone to these three relief funds, totaling now nearly $9 million. I'm so appreciated, appreciative of the dedicated work of the Dayton Foundation staff and for the thoughtful leadership of the Dayton Foundation Board this past year under the leadership of Jim Pankos and Marva Cosby. My deepest appreciation to NCCJ for all of your work. And I'm just so thankful to be part of a community that so unselfishly steps forward to help their neighbors in times of need. Thank you. Thanks, Mike, for all the work that you do. Okay, and now our mayor, Nan Whaley, it's a person that I see uh, every now and then. Uh, thank you, Nan, for all the great work that you've done in helping to lead the city through these very serious challenges. Uh, I'd like to thank NCCJ for this terrific honor and want to congratulate uh, all the amazing uh, individuals that are also receiving well-deserved rewards. Uh, what's we've been through the past 18 months in the city of Dayton and across this region is pretty spectacular. But the most spectacular thing about it is how everyone has come together and figured out as a community how we can work together to make sure that we take care of those 
maybe that don't have as strong as a, of a voice as we do, maybe don't have the kind of um, access to different resources that we have. The generosity of this community, uh, the love and support we've seen uh, from the vi uh, two people, like the victims of the tornadoes, to uh, folks that have been hit hard by the mass shooting in the Oregon District to August 4th, to what we see every day, those that don't have voices that are uh, struggling through this time of COVID, this community is amazing. The way that folks have just dug in and given more and more and continue to fight for equity in our community makes me proud to be the mayor of Dayton. I'm honored to have this award, but it's really the people of Dayton and the community that deserve the recognition. Thank you. Okay, again, thank you, Nan, for all your work. And now, um, Tom Mosby, uh, guys, with the United Way, again, just a tremendous partner as far as this community is concerned. Well, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank NCCJ and especially Adrian Miller for this wonderful opportunity of recognition. Recognition is a great thing, but I would be remiss if I did not thank all of the people who made it possible for me to be here thanking you today. And that is my team back at United Way and my board and all of the phenomenal organizations in our community that support United Way. So thank you very much. Um, it, it's great. Uh, that an organization like NCCJ is on the front lines in these critical times that we're in, uh, COVID and racial justice and all of the great work you do. And I also want to say that uh, this community, the nonprofit community, needs a lot of help. We're doing great work, but we still need a lot of help. And thank this community for everything that you do to make sure that we stay on the front lines. You know, wow. And uh, thank you again, and congratulations to this year's Humanitarian Award recipients. And on top of everything else, NCCJ has worked tirelessly to adapt to our current virtual climate. Here we have members of the NCCJ staff who will tell you about the additional programs that they offer. Each of these programs brings awareness to diversity and equity in the Miami Valley. Hello, my name is Anthony Pettiford. I am the Prevention Coordinator at NCCJ of Greater Dayton. In the midst of recent events and our current social climate, our community has made big strides forward in expanding our diversity and inclusion. This is a movement, not a moment. Expanding our awareness of cultures, understanding our own privileges, and strategically aligning our businesses and communities towards true inclusion is crucial. A big part of this time of growth is professional development training. NCCJ has worked to create strong interactive educational sessions available both by ticketed event and for workplaces and organizations. These trainings cover topics including social change, more than just a post, implicit bias, understanding multicultural diversity, understanding privilege and the responsibility of being an ally, and inclusive leadership. We are currently scheduling eight-week courses meeting once a week containing all four of these hour and a half long sessions, or they are available independently. To secure a seat in one of our upcoming virtual learning opportunities, visit nccjgreaterdayton.org slash training. If you're interested in learning more about how to bring one of these sessions to your workplace, or to learn more about the other workplace development offerings that we have, including workplace tailored sessions and consulting, visit our website at nccjgreaterdayton.org or give us a call at 937-222-6225. Hey everyone, my name is Lake Miller, Prevention Manager with NCCJ. A year ago, NCCJ created our podcast, Gym City Diversity. Through Gym City Diversity, NCCJ highlights important topics of diversity, equity, and inclusion in the Miami Valley and beyond. Our weekly episodes lift up stories of protesters or witnesses to current events, discusses the diversity topics impacting your lives, and provides education around the topics of diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have a great time working on the podcast. And to those of you who tune in each week to listen, thank you. If you have not yet had a chance to tune in, 
Gym City Diversity is available wherever you get your podcasts, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and iHeartRadio. If you have any topics you wish we'd cover, we would love to hear from you and try to research that topic. So reach out to us today at nccjgreaterdayton.org slash podcast. Hey everyone, my name is Tabani Manika and I want to welcome you guys to NCCJ's 43rd annual Friendship Live I want to talk about how grateful I am, first of all, for NCCJ and what they have done in my life. To be 100% honest with you guys, I would have not found my path without NCCJ. Six years ago, I began as an AmeriCorps VISTA. I ended up working as a juvenile probation officer not too long after, volunteered in NCCJ during that time, and now I'm back as a contractor getting my hours as I get my master's degree. Not only again did NCCJ allow me to figure out who I am, but they also showed me how to give back. And speaking of giving back, I have an exciting announcement that we are so, so, so ready to get you guys in on. NCCJ has partnered with Yellow Springer Tees, and there's a link down below to where you can access t-shirts like this, masks like this, and many other NCCJ items. Also, a proceeds, a percentage of the proceeds will go towards NCCJ. Another way to help is to text Dayton United to 44321. Again, text Dayton United to 44321. Thank you, everyone. We appreciate your help. Be safe. Wow, these sound like great programs. You know, with the challenges that we've had uh, with job losses, uh, health issues, food crises, you know, this is very much beneficial for the city of Dayton. The next video takes a deeper look at the impact of NCCJ programs, including any town and police and youth together. Let's check them out. The mission of NCCJ is to build a community dedicated to eliminating bias, bigotry, and all forms of discrimination. We do this with a variety of programs. The people especially that I've met through NCCJ have been some of my most steadfast friends and um, mentors. Uh, A lot of the counselors that I had when I was um, uh, a delegate are still really close with me. Um, and there's some of those people are still involved with NCCJ, so you can see that the longevity of the program really involves people who are very dedicated to the to the values. It's really just the people, how this is just a, a safe place. They really love you, and they really just take the time to really know you as a person. And I just love how together this camp is, because at the end, you really start to feel like family together. It's a good camp to come to, to get more insight and Um, learn more about the people you surround yourself with. We've learned a lot actually from them. Uh, They come in here sometimes with uh, preset judgments and they think that they know how everything is going to be and they know everyone just based on their the little knowledge that they they know Um, but throughout the camp we all kind of learn and grow together and learn more about each other. It's kind of unrealistic to me because just where I am from it's just not diverse and it's not accepting so it's like a huge cultural shock and there's so many different people here like that speak like 12 different languages they go they travel all over the world so it's really nice to like actually see the real world. I think it was great that we are able to have dialogue and be able to educate people that don't really know much about a lot of these issues that are going on and you hear first-hand experience of other people and also hear how other people live in different situations that they're in and the environments they grew up in and how different they look. It gave me a different perspective of the police. I used to hate the police, but once I attended this camp, I got a better understanding of what their job and what they go through every day. 
like we'll see a cop uh, rolling around and they like put their hands in their pockets and stuff and I tell them don't be nervous because they're here to protect and serve us not to hurt us. I think we as a country and as a society have never really talked about uncomfortable things. We don't talk about poverty and money problems. We don't talk about racism. We don't talk about sexism because it's easier not to have the conversation, right? So if we as citizens who want to improve our country actually really want to do that work, then we have to confront the uncomfortable conversations and we have to confront the things that we um, have believed about our own selves um, or believed about other people because we can't move forward unless we look back and do something about what's happened. That was just a handful of the lives that we have impacted in the past year through NCCJ. With your donation, we are able to continue our mission of building a community dedicated to eliminating bias, bigotry, and all forms of discrimination something that is more important now than it has been ever before. We need to continue these conversations. We need to create strong leaders that can go out there and make systemic change. We need it to happen with our youth and our adults all throughout our community. So thank you for your help and your support. Man, that was a tremendous video. Uh, thank you for that. And lastly, we want to introduce Mr. Adrian Taylor. Gosh, guys, I've known Adrian since he was 18 years old. He was one of uh, my mentees in a program that I had when he was a senior in high school. Uh, currently, Adrian is a board member and the chief diversity officer for Premier Health Partners, our presenting sponsor. Adrian is going to discuss the current status of NCCJ. And again, I'd like to bring to you Adrian. Thank you, Commissioner Mills. My name is Adrian Taylor, and I sit on the board for the National Conference for Community and Justice, known as the NCCJ. I am the Director of Diversity for Premier Health, who is also the presenting sponsor. The mission of NCCJ is to build community dedicated to eliminating bias, bigotry, and all forms of discrimination. Over the past several months, we received funding from Montgomery County Adams to support our youth programming. We've also received funding from Learn to Earn Dayton to create a new program for Anytown Youth Equity Fellows. Our staff has grown to three full-time employees. And as Anthony mentioned earlier this evening, we're offering a diversity one-on-one -on -one series offered online for the community and can be customized for interested organizations. Keep an eye out for a new deeper dive series starting in January of 2021. NCCJ will continue to challenge stereotypes and celebrate differences, to continue to work with students and the community regardless if it's in person or virtually. NCCJ is a wonderful organization as you've seen this evening, but it takes people like you to donate to help give NCCJ the resources we need to continue to grow and impact our community. Thank you. And I'll hand it back now to Commissioner Mills. You know, thank you guys for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Uh, it was almost like doing the Academy Awards. You know, certainly all these individuals are, are great individuals and very valuable to our community. And we thank you again for what you've done. Um, uh, I can't say anything else. Just uh, thank you. Good night. Drive safe. And uh, have a great rest of your life.